Hello and welcome back to NV Fine Art Studio. I am Nina and today I want to share with you my typical daily practice when I don't have time for a larger work. I believe in daily practices even if it's just throwing some paint around without any particular image in mind. I believe it's not just about gaining experience and getting better day after day, but more about feeling free and relaxed when you paint, getting rid of fears, experimenting, letting your mind and hand and brush be one thing. But today's practice is a little different and I'm very excited about it. I want to use the full midden watercolor painting set instead of my typical arrangement. If you like the result after watching this, I have a 10% discount code NINA10 for this set and for the paper block. The link will be in the description below. I know I promised a full review of paints and brushes and this is not it, this is just a little practice. I am hesitant to do a full proper review just on assembling the paints. I know big brands well and I want to get to know Miran as well before giving you my full review. So I want to do a few paintings and just see how the paints perform under different circumstances. Here we have the full midden painting set. It includes paper, brushes, paints, ceramic bowl and all midden except the palette. In regards to the palette, it is just a generic foldable plastic palette. I decided to fill it with midden paints as it's very handy for plain air and I'm planning to take these paints on the next plane uh, with me. But the issue is there are 24 paints in this set and there are only 19 wells in this palette. I usually do not use greens, so I could have just left the greens out. But because this is a testing process, I think I need to include at least a few greens in my palette as well. So I've got a few spare wells here and I'm going to use double sticky tape to adhere it to the palette. I'll add three and I think I will use only sap green and phthalo from the ranch. These are two greens that I'm familiar with from other brands and I think it would be fair. Now I'm going to fill in all these wells and also I will put the initials next to the paints just to familiarize myself with the names and the hues. And we are all done, let's start. So this is the subject, sunset in Hastings. And I particularly like the sky and the water. The rest we will simplify as much as possible. One third is for the sky and two thirds for the land. And I'm going to simplify the land. So instead of having all these bushes, dry wet sand and pavement, I'm going to have just a piece of land with grass. And just because this is a marine scene, I'm going to add a few boats to the shore. I'm going to start with the largest flat brush from the sand and I'm going to prepare a very fluid light tonal value mixture and I'm going to use yellow ochre, Cambodge and a bit of vermilion. Looks about right, let's start with this. This is a sunset scene, so lots of warmth in the sky. And the bottom part of the sky needs to be a little bit warmer, so I'm adding a bit more red to the bottom part of the sky. Now we are ready to paint the clouds wet on wet. So we need to prepare a dark, cool mixture. I'm going to use cerulean and cobalt blue for this, and I'm going to neutralize it a little bit with yellow ochre and vermilion. And it's quite important to have this mixture thicker. First of all, because we're painting wet on wet, and if your mixtures are much more watery, you will start creating a uh, cauliflower uh, blooms. And secondly, because we need to achieve the darkness. If the mixture is too watery, uh, water means light. So if your mixture is too watery, it means that you will not have the correct tonal value. 
the clouds will be too light. So here I am adding a little bit more ultramarine and raw amber into the mixture to paint the darkest area of the clouds. Now I'm going to soften some edges and this is to suggest soft light that goes through the clouds. And to soften the edges I'm using a smaller flat brush and I make sure it's clean and it's damp. I'm using the tissue to control how much moisture is in the brush. The sky is done, now I'm going to paint the water and I'm using the same cool mixture that we used before but with just a little bit more water because we need to make sure that it's slightly lighter. I'm leaving a few whites of the paper out and this is to suggest the light that reflects from the sky. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre into that blue mixture and this is to uh, just suggest the, um, the warmth that we see in the sky uh, reflected in the water. Now we're going to make this mixture a little darker so we're not adding any more water but paint and I've just added a bit of ultramarine, raw amber and um, cobalt blue and this is for the water in the very foreground and also for the reflection in the in the background and now we don't have the background at the moment but like with everything in watercolor you need to think ahead so we will paint the background later but now because the water is um, still wet the area with the water is still wet we paint in the reflection wet on wet I'm happy with the dark part of the reflection now I'm going to do the light part of the reflection uh, so I'm using the clean damp brush and I'm um, lifting some paint. I'm using the same brush, this is a large flat brush and after every lift I make sure to clean the brush and remove the excess of moisture on the tissue. And now I'm going to finish painting the land area with whatever I have left on the palette, it doesn't really matter. This area will be painted over with a darker thicker mixture when we do the second wash and we will not see um, the first wash through the second wash. So it doesn't really matter, I'm using whatever I have on the palette. And now it's very important, while the background is still wet, I will paint the distant trees. We need cool middle value thick mixture to create soft controlled edges. If it's too much water in this mixture, again, we will create cauliflowers. So we don't really want that. So we need to make sure that this mixture is quite thick. And I'm using cerulean blue, cobalt blue and raw amber in this mixture. The first light tonal value wash is finished, now I'm going to dry this and then we'll start painting our second wash, middle and dark tonal values, wet on dry. For my second wash I will use largest round brush from this set and I'm going to start with the same dark mixture that we used for the background, except I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre into the mixture. And this is to make sure that the trees that are closer to us, these bushes that are closer to us, are warmer. So the background is usually cooler and the middle and foreground is usually warmer. So that's why I added a little bit of yellow ochre into the existing mixture that we use for the background trees. And for the rest of the foreground I'm going to use this larger brush because this shape is much larger. And we obviously don't have enough paint, so I'm adding all the same colors into the mixture, fully loading the brush and just quickly painting the foreground. I usually do the very foreground darker, so I'm going to add more paint to the mixture and with a bit of raw amber this time. And now we need to spray this to make sure that everything is mixes on the paper by itself. Okay, and now also the edge of the land needs to be a little sharp and dark, so I'm going to fix that. And now I'm going to add a touch of pure yellow ochre into the very foreground to reflect um, that warmth that we have in the sky. And also I'm going to use raw amber, pure raw amber in the very foreground. And this is to suggest the darkest shadows. Now we're going to spray this again to make sure that everything is mixes on its own on the paper. 
Now it's time for the details. So I've changed the brush to the round with a fine point and I'm going to add the shadows and also the people and the boats. When I'm painting the boats and the people, I'm very suggestive. I'm just doing a few brush marks and I leave it at that. So for the people, just a one little brush mark for the head and this and then slightly bigger brush mark for the uh, for the body and for the boats even simpler. So I'm just pressing the brush against the paper and then I'm doing the mark and that's it. It's all done. Now I'm going to add the reflection to the distant bushes so this is a very watery blue mixture basically i'm pre-wetting the area with the blue mixture and i'm dropping a bit of green that green mixture that we had on the palette and that's it the reflection is done the second wash is finished and it's time to dry this This is all dry, now I'm picking up smaller fine brush and black paint and I'm going to adjust the fine details. It's quite important to use the blackest black straight from the tube or well at this point because we need coverage and the thicker the paint the more coverage it has. So at the moment I'm, I've just adjusted the uh, fishing rods with this fine point and also adjusted the shape of the boat and the persons in the very foreground and pretty much that's it. Maybe I'll add a few um, little bits and pieces are very dark shadows into the foreground just few dots here and there and that's it the painting will be finished in a split second and it's time to sign it and have a look at the finished product so here are the finished painting on the left we have the painting that i did with my typical palette with just um daniel smith Winsor newton and holbein paints and on the right we have painting that we've just done with midden paints honestly i'm beyond impressed I was always such a die-hard, expensive uh, professional paints for all type of work. But now I honestly don't see reason why not to use cheaper paints, especially for practice, for everyday paintings. But I would definitely like to hear your opinion. So here's two paintings side by side with my typical paint and with medium paint. Please leave your comments. I really want to hear your opinion. So this is all for today. Until my next video, goodbye. And I will be looking forward to your comments.